Back in December 2015, SpaceX landed its first rocket successfully. The feat was hailed as a key step in company founder Elon Musk's quest to develop an inexpensive, reliable, reusable rocket. But that was just half the story. Three months later, the more challenging and potentially revolutionary step was accomplished when another Falcon rocket dispatched a cargo ship to the International Space Station, then turned around and landed on a platform gently bobbing in the Atlantic Ocean. Honestly, explosions and mishaps led up to the shining moment of success when this difficult and new feat was finally achieved. And they said it couldn't be done, at least no one has ever done it, until, of course, you did it. Former NASA Space Shuttle Manager Wayne Hale wrote in a congratulatory note to SpaceX on Twitter, and seven years since then, SpaceX is now a master in this. However, that doesn't make it easy, but instead, a genius skill. Find out everything about SpaceX's booster recovery drone ships in today's episode of Alpha Tech. First, why does SpaceX favor ocean landings? Good point, it's not easier than landing on land. A drone ship floating on the ocean is a harder target to hit than a large expanse of ground since it's smaller and floating on moving water. Plus, all of SpaceX's ocean landing attempts have resulted in the rocket exploding. However, landing at sea can be less tricky than ground landings, and the main reason has to do with fuel. To return back to Earth, the Falcon 9 has to use the fuel left over from takeoff to reignite its engines in a series of burns. These burns help to adjust the rocket's speed and reorient the vehicle into the right position for entering the Earth's atmosphere and then landing. Different types of landing techniques require different amounts of fuel, and that revolves around how the Falcon 9 launches. The rocket doesn't travel straight upward into space, but follows a parabolic arc up and away from the launch pad. Because of this, the rocket has to go through a lot to do a ground landing. The vehicle has to slow down in the direction it's heading, completely turn around, and then retread the vertical and horizontal distance it's covered to get back to the landing site. That requires a lot of extra fuel. Ocean landings aren't as complicated as that. SpaceX's drone ship can position itself in an ideal place to catch the vehicle on its more natural path back to Earth. That decreases the distance the rocket needs to travel, as well as the amount of fuel needed to maneuver the Falcon 9 for landing. For SpaceX missions that use up lots of fuel, performing a ground landing may not even be possible. Rockets that launch heavy payloads or go into high orbit need extra speed during the initial ascent, and extra speed means more fuel. Those Falcon 9s have to reach extra high velocities, which don't have as much fuel left over for the landing. That's when the drone ship is the best, if not the only option for recovery. The whole point of landing these rockets is to help save SpaceX money on launch costs. The other rockets are either destroyed or lost once they launch into space, meaning entirely new rockets need to be built for each mission. SpaceX hopes to recover as many rockets as possible to cut down on costs of creating new vehicles. The Falcon 9 costs $60 million to make and only two hundred dollars to fuel. The drone ship is a modified barge that's outfitted with a large landing platform station-keeping thrusters, and other equipment to allow SpaceX to land boosters at sea on high-velocity missions that can't carry enough fuel to allow for a return to launch site landing. Currently, there are three active drone ships that regularly serve as landing platforms for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy's first stages that launch from both coasts of the United States. All West Coast launches are supported by Of Course I Still Love You, or Ocusly, stationed in the port of Long Beach, Akasli was the Autonomous Spaceport Drone Ship, or ASDS, to serve the first landing on ASDS on April 8, 2016. On the East Coast are two drone ships, Just Read the Instructions, or JRTI, and the Shortfall of Gravitas, ASOG, both stationed in Port Canaveral, Florida. Due to the high cadence of launches from the East Coast, two drone ships are nearly required in order to support all these launches. Out of all the successes come very few mishaps where boosters were unable to be recovered. Speaking of strictly landing on the water, since the first attempt in March of 2016, which resulted in the loss of a booster, SpaceX has failed to recover a booster during an Indian Ocean landing only 12 times out of a total of 162 missions. So how has SpaceX done this? Let's dive into Of Course I Still Love You as an example. Akasli is built upon a barge, Marmac 304, and was modified in a Louisiana shipyard, 
Modifications included an expanded deck to increase the size of the landing platform, the installation of four thruster engines so the drone ship can autonomously maintain its position at sea, and blast shielding to protect electrical and engine equipment on deck. It's equipped with four azimuth thrusters that are fitted to each corner of the landing platform. When deployed, they allow the drone ship to maintain a precise position while at sea. Elon has stated that the drone ship is capable of maintaining its target position to within 3 meters, even under storm conditions. The drone ship can maintain its target position autonomously or under remote control by operators on a support ship. The drone ship is fitted with cameras, sensors, and other measuring equipment to allow SpaceX to record and gather data on the landings. On a number of occasions, it's been shown that the cameras can be remotely adjusted and moved during landings to provide a better perspective. Of Course I Still Love You is fitted with two satellite antennas for the uplink of data and communication with the incoming booster. A common problem experienced during SpaceX webcasts is the video connection to the drone ship cutting out during the landing. This occurs because vibrations created by the landing booster violently shake the drone ship, temporarily breaking the connection and uplink to the satellite. A robot, officially named the Falcon 9 Securing Robot, but universally known as the Octagrabber, lives on the drone ship and is deployed shortly after a booster landing. The robot is remotely driven in its blast-proof shelter and positioned underneath the Falcon 9. Forearms then raise up and latch on to the Falcon 9 octaweb, securing the booster for transit. Akasli is equipped with remotely operated firefighting hoses that can quickly deluge the drone ship in water in the event of an explosion or fire caused by a failed landing. SpaceX drone ships are not designed to autonomously move themselves over long distances. Instead, a tugboat is used to tow the drone ship to the target position offshore in the Atlantic Ocean. The exact positions of the drone ship are dependent on mission requirements. Boosters used on Starlink and geostationary transfer orbit missions typically land between 600 and 675 kilometers downrange. The furthest drone ship position was 1,239 kilometers downrange set during the STP-2 Falcon Heavy mission in June 2019. Akasli and the tugboat will leave port up to seven days in advance of the launch date, with other accompanying support ships leaving later. After traveling to the landing zone, the thrusters and other equipment are engaged. Support vessels and the tugboat will then retreat to a safe distance to observe the landings. Of Course I Still Love You is unmanned during all landings. Once the landing is complete, Octagrabber will be deployed to secure the booster, and SpaceX technicians will disengage the thrusters and prepare the drone ship for the return journey. The tugboat will then tow Akasli back to port. Well, the need to land reusable rockets at sea is so important that it sparked a legal battle between SpaceX and Jeff Bezos' space company Blue Origin over who had the rights to the idea. But after all we can see, while SpaceX is a master at this, Blue Origin still hasn't gotten into orbit. And that just about wraps up today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments below. Your support makes us want to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you again next time. Stay safe.